Every summer, my two kids go to sleepaway camp. They love camp, and it's great for them. They build self-confidence, make new friends, and for seven weeks, swap the oppressive New York City ozone for crispy Pocono mountain air. I love camp, too. Specifically, the fact that for 49 consecutive days, someone else takes care of my children. <laughs> Finally, school is out for summer, and the first day of camp is here. I have it circled on the calendar in bright red Sharpie. When they board that beautiful camp bus at the Port Authority, I do my happy dance. <laughs> if you don't believe me, ask my husband. He has it on video. <laughs> For a couple of years, my kids went to day camp, and that was okay. But the first summer when they both went to sleepaway camp, now that was decadent. Remember that Seinfeld episode when George coined the phrase, the summer of George? His parents had just retired to Florida, and there was a 1,500-mile buffer zone between them. He was untethered. I could relate. So that's what my husband and I call our summers when both kids are away. It's our summer of George. When I explain this expression to my mother, she wasn't pleased. <laughs> Lisa, she said, your children are going to think you don't love them. Uh, wait a minute, Mom. Didn't you send me to sleepaway camp? <laughs> now let me set the record straight. I love my kids. But here's a little secret of mine that other moms might agree with. I like it when they're away. <laughs> when friends ask me how I'm managing without my children at home, I look at them like they're crazy. <laughs> I'm managing just fine. Why wouldn't I be? All I know is that raising a teen and a tween, working and managing some semblance of a household is all-consuming. In the coming days, I won't have to worry about how my children will navigate the angst of drama-filled middle school. I can put my referee whistle away because in the coming days, no one will tell me that someone else is breathing on them. <laughs> And I am ready to catch my breath. After my husband and I return home from dropping off the kids, I revel in the quiet. I pull the calendar off the kitchen cabinet. There is no need to chart the lazy days ahead. I get started right away on my Summer of George to-do list. I eat at restaurants that don't have chicken nuggets, fingers, or tenders. And I sleep a little later because I don't have to pull my teenage son out of bed in the mornings, which in my house is like raising the shipwrecked Costa Concordia. <laughs> I have thought many times maybe I'm not cut out for motherhood. I should want them home with me, right? I should bond with my daughter and son 24-7 and deepen our relationship like they instructed us at Mommy and Me. I should ditch George Costanza and channel my inner Carol Brady who consoled Jan with her Marsha inferiority complex and assisted Peter with his paper mache volcano. <laughs> then, sure enough, as the weeks go on, I start to really miss them. I want them home. Seven weeks is too long. They are growing up every day without me, and I want to be smack dab in the middle of it. Finally, camp is over, and the bus pulls into the Port Authority. They step off, laden with art projects and sleeping bags slung over one shoulder. They had a great time at camp, just like I did when I was their age. But I am so glad they're back. It's clear I am a better mom for having sent them away. <laughs> mm. I wrap my arms around my glowing daughter, her hair and eyelashes now the color of honey, and smother her with kisses. I hug my growing teenage son and manage to plant a few on his freckled cheeks before he pulls away. We grab the bags, taxi to our apartment, and drag the overstuffed duffels inside. Then reality hits. I am staring down at least 16 loads of aromatic camp laundry. And unlike Carol Brady, I have no Alice to help me. 
Although one summer, my son packed a water gun full of water inside his bags, giving everything a pre-soak. <laughs> I have no doubt that more camp mementos will be waiting for me at the bottom of the washing machine. Twigs, dried leaves, bubblegum wrappers, hair bands, along with socks that went to camp bright white and came home 50 shades of clay. <laughs> and by the end of the day, our first night home, someone is yelling at someone because they are breathing on them. <laughs> Where's my bright red Sharpie? I pull out next year's calendar, circle that magical date, <laughs> and count only 45 more weeks till my next Summer of George. <laughs> <laughs>